Oh! A fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. When the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion Tonto rode into Wiltonville in mid-afternoon, they found the street strangely empty. When they reached the courthouse, they learned the cause. Nearly everyone in town was packed into the small building. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, <coughs> Fellows even sitting on windowsill. Yes, Tonto. I see them. Said a big fellow. <laughs> Must be an important trial. Oh, that right. Perhaps the old fellow sitting on the steps can tell us something about it. We go ask him? Yes, let's... Him watch us plenty close. Curious about my mask. Ah. Hello there. Why, Thunder, that is a mask you're wearing. That's right. Oh, uh, what's going on inside the courthouse? Well, I'm a thinking about the mask. Don't often see mask men sunning up as casual like as you are. There uh, seems to be a lot of interest in the trial. Yep. They're going to hang Bob Martin. You speak as if it's all settled. Sure, it's all settled. Is the trial over? That there trial is nothing but a formality to make the hanging legal. <laughs> Worst of it is, Bob Martin's no more guilty than I am. Then why will he hang? For robbery and murder. I got him framed airtight. Well, if you know that, why aren't you inside giving your testimony? <laughs> My testimony wouldn't mean a thing. Because I can't back it with proof. Then how do you know this fellow's innocent? Because I know Bob Martin. Oh? What's more, I know the way things is done here in Wiltonville. Well, they'll find him guilty before sundown and sentence him to hang. I see. Inside the week, he'll decorate the hangman's tree. And the skunk that really killed Joe Fenner will sit back and relax with the money it was stole. You said Martin was framed. Yep. Joe Fenner got knifed to death in the night. Bob Martin didn't have no alibi for that night. And he was known to have had a row with Fenner. Oh. To top all that, there was a knife in Martin's desk at the express office. And that knife fitted a slit in Fenner's hide. Is that all the evidence there is? Well, it's all that's needed. It seems to me that someone should help him. <laughs> Can't be done. The real killer set out to frame him, and he'll stay framed. 
We'll uh, see about that, Montano. Uh, Let's see what's going on in that courtroom. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The former will rise and read the verdict. We, the jury, find the prisoner guilty as charged in the indictment. Yeah. Judge, I didn't steal any money or bonds, and I didn't kill Joe Fenner. What? You... Oh, I know there's no use denying it anymore. I know I've been found guilty, and I know I'll hang. There's just one thing I'd like to do before they hang me. Any reasonable request to be granted? I... I want to speak to my mother. Uh, just a minute, Martin. Your mother's on a ranch, isn't she? Yes, sir. It's about two hours from here on a good horse. She... She can't come here. She's not able to get around very much. And after I... I'm gone, she'll need cash. She'll need it bad, and I... Well, I have some cash hidden away. The stolen cash? No, sir. It was bonds that were stolen. This is cash that I've been saving up for a long time. I... I wanted to surprise her with it. That's why I kept it hidden. More than know anything about it. I'm afraid your request is unreasonable. We can't let a condemned man leave town. Judge, there can be a dozen guards with me. I've got to speak to Mo. I've just got to. If you want to send a message to your mother, I'll see that it's delivered. You mean I should tell someone where the cash is hidden? That to write a note? A note could be read by anyone, couldn't it? You think after the way this trial's been handled and the way I've been railroaded to a hangman's rope that I'd trust anyone to take that kind of a message to my mother? Martin, got your tongue. You've had a fair trial. Fair trial? Every bit of evidence was framed. Any fool could see that. That's enough. You've had your say. It is the sense of this court that you be taken to prison and held there until daybreak on the morning of the 14th of this month, at which time you will be taken to the courtyard and hanged by the neck until dead. And may the Lord have mercy on you soon. Lock that cell door, Larson. Right. Sorry about the way things turned out, Martin. <laughs> One more feather in your cap, isn't it, Sheriff Green? I have to do my duty to see it. Wish there was something I could do for you, Bob. But I reckon there's not. Well, hold on, Deputy Larson. That's condemned killer you're talking to. I know, I know that. Lock him in. I'll go into the cell with you, Martin. Better make sure you got a blanket on the bunk. <laughs> What's the difference? Bob, I heard what you asked the judge. Yeah? What about it? I don't know whether you want to trust me or not, but if you do, I'll be glad to take word to your ma. I'm trusting no one. Suit yourself. There's someone in this town who was smart enough to steal a lot of bonds and murder a man and frame me for the whole deal. If anyone in town finds out where I've hidden my cash, the killer will be slick enough to get it. But if you think I'm trusting I... no one, deputy. That's all there is to it. All right. <laughs> Did he have a blanket? Huh. <laughs> you better go home now and get some sleep. You'll have to stand guard tonight. I'm going. <laughs> Didn't get far. Martin. Well, what do you want, Sheriff? Step over to the bar so I can talk easier. What is it? I heard what Deputy Larson was saying. And you heard what I told him. You don't trust anyone, do you, Bob? No, I don't. Mm. Makes it sort of tough for your ma, don't it? Seems a shame for her to be in want when there's cash. It could be hers if you just open your mouth. Meaning that you'll take word to her if I tell you where the cash is hidden. Yeah. I told Larson I didn't trust anyone. I meant it. But I'm the How many times have I got to say it? I'm not trusting anyone. After the trial, the Lone Ranger and Tonto spent the day learning all they could about the robbery and the murder, and about Bob Martin. That night found the masked man and his Indian companion in a small cottonwood grove in the rear of the jail. They waited until the darkness was as nearly complete as the new moon would permit. We're justified, Tonto. I'm sure of it. That's right. I'm certain Bob Martin told the truth in court. There was a lot of evidence against him. You think there's no way to find real killer? I I don't know, Kimosabe. I've been trying to think of some plan. I haven't been successful. 
Murderer seems to have covered his tracks mighty well. Not right. However, we'll not give up until the trap is sprung beneath Martin's feet. In the meantime, we'll see that he gets his last wish. It's dark now. Not to get any darker. All right, come on. Leave the horses right here. There's only one fellow on guard at jail. Me find that out. Did you find out who he was? Him deputy. Name of Larson. Oh, I remember him. He was in court. Uh, oh, wait. What matter? Oh, look at the jail. The light in one window. Must be the window of Bob Martin's cell. Uh, Have to be careful how we close in. From now on, not a sound. You sure you want me to talk through the bars, Martin? Maybe you better try to sleep. Ah, uh, what's the use? I can't sleep. Every time I try to, I get wide awake thinking about a killer running around scot-free and laughing at the way I'll hang in his place. I know, Bob. It's tough. You needn't say that, Lawson. If you think I'm guilty... I don't think you are. If you were the killer, you had to have the stolen bonds somewhere around. I haven't got them. Those bonds will turn up someday. Then the truth may come out. And those fat-headed fools that listen to the evidence will see that they hung the wrong man. Well, Bob, I'm not going to let the case drop. I'm not the only one in this town that thinks you're not guilty. There's others. I'm glad of that. I'm starting as soon as I go off duty in the morning. I'm going to do my level best to find some new evidence in this murder. Well, you have to work mighty fast if you expect to do me any good. Well, I sure aim to try. Thanks for that, Lawson. Well, Bob, uh, I... I don't like to bring it up again, but... Your ma should have any cash you've got. If you think you can trust me, why, I'll take a message to her to tell her where it's hid. Uh... What'd you say? No, thanks, Larson. I... Hey, wait. I heard someone outside. Yeah? Better go to the door and see. Anyone here? Yes. Hey, what are you, Larson? Uh, that's a good one. Got him, fellow. Uh, me got him. Carry him inside. Yes. Put him in the sheriff's chair. Hey, Mass. Take it easy, Martin. I'm here to help you. What'd you do to the deputy? Just nudged him with my fist. Uh, there. We tie him hands? Yes, and gag him when he begins to recover consciousness. First of all, I got the keys from his pocket. Uh, let me find them. I don't savvy this. What's it mean? Martin, you, are... you wanted to go to your mother. You're going to get the chance. <laughs> Great day. Don't tell me that you're going to do me favors like the others. What's that? Never mind. Just forget it. Here, your keys. Good. Now we'll let you out, Martin. Don't you bother. Can... What? I said don't bother. I'm not falling for your trick. Trick? <laughs> I'm to go and tell Ma where the cash is hidden. You tag along and take it. That's the play, isn't it? You think that we... Well, of course you do. What else could you think? I'm wearing a mask. Yeah. And you're the fifth man that's made a play for that cash. The fifth? Yeah. Who are the others? What's it to you? Tell me, Martin. Everyone wants to do a favor for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now that I'm to hang and I've got no end of friends. I wonder where they all were hiding when my jury was picked. Did the sheriff offer to do you a favor? Oh, sure. Sure, he was all set to ride out the house and tell Ma where there was $3,000 hidden away. Maybe he'd have told her, maybe he wouldn't. Who else? The deputy, Larson, was all for doing me a great big favor with trimmings. Only maybe he'd have done himself more of a favor than he did me. You said there were four before I came here. Old Lem Foster was here, too. He visited me a little while before I was locked up. Lem Foster's convinced that you're not guilty. Yeah. And the judge is convinced that I am, but even he was here. Offering to ride to my mother and tell her about the case. The judge, the sheriff, the deputy, and uh, Lem Foster. And now you. Well, save your time and energy, see? I don't want any favors. Someone killed Joe Fenner for his bonds. I'm hanging for him, see? He's still at large, and I don't want the same murdering skunk to kill my maw for that cash. I see. Now get out. Get out and leave me alone. No, Martin. I have a better plan. Huh? I'm not going to get out, and neither are you. But we are going to have a talk. A long talk. Toto, you see that the deputy stays asleep. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was quite late at night when Deputy Larson finally regained consciousness. He found himself in the chair at the sheriff's desk. It took several minutes for him to get his bearings. Then he saw that Bob Martin was still awake and watching. <sighs> My jaw. What, what happened? He got knocked out, Larson. Yeah, I, I remember a masked man. Yeah, there was a masked man here all right enough. He left something there on the sheriff's desk. Left something? Where? Right there. He said it was a special bullet. Said you'd know what it meant. Here it is. It... Oh, silver. He said to tell you that his horse was called Silver. He seemed to think you'd know who he was. Horse named Silver. Silver Bullet. Great Scott. Huh? I get it. What do you mean? You know that man? I think I know who he is. Listen to me, Martin. Listen to me. What's the matter with you? What'd the masked man say? What'd he tell you? Well, he said he was satisfied that I wasn't guilty of murdering Joe Fenner and that I wouldn't hang for it. Uh, gosh, I wish I could believe him. Why'd you decide you weren't guilty? Well, I guess the main reason was because the bonds that were stolen from Joe Fenner haven't been found. He figured they'd have turned up if I'd killed him. I see. Larson. Uh. Since he left, I've been watching you. Unconscious in the chair. Yeah. I, uh... I decided on something. Well? Now, look, I... I can't count on what the masked man said. I don't see how he can find the real killer in time to save me from hanging. Neither do I. On the other hand, he might. At any rate, I... I decided that I've got to trust someone. You offered to do me a favor. The offer still holds, Martin. All right. And I'll tell you where I hid my cash. Now, listen carefully. While Bob Martin confided in the sheriff's deputy who spent the night on guard duty, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were at the home of the sheriff himself. They had crept into the house and made their way to the lawman's bedroom. The sheriff was wakened, given time to get wide awake, and then... I'll turn the lamp a little higher, Sheriff Green. I've got something for you. May I spy it under? And right in my own bedroom. You... Where in Don't Thunder's fumble, my... Sheriff. Tonto took the gun from beneath your pillow. What are you after? I said I'd brought something for you. Here it is. Uh, bullet. Look more closely. Hold it to the light. You'll see that it's a silver bullet. A uh, silver bullet? I hoped it might identify me. Yeah. What if it does? In that case, I'll not have to go any further to convince you that I'm here to help the law. I see. You think the law needs some help? Is that it? You have a convicted man in jail. What about him? I'll not be satisfied that he's guilty until the stolen bonds are found. Yeah. I'd hate to hang an innocent man. Sheriff, the hunt for the real killer won't end with Martin's death. You say you're willing to help the law? You'll accept help? Help from the Lone Ranger? I sure will. From the home of the sheriff, the Lone Ranger made his way to the palatial home of the judge, who, roused from a sound sleep, was also given a silver bullet which identified the intruder. The conversation was much the same as that which had gone before. I'll not be satisfied that he's guilty until the stolen bonds are found. The hunt for the real killer won't end with Martin's death. The masked man's work did not end with a visit to the judge. Lem Foster had a caller at daybreak. Silver bullet. Lem, you didn't think Bob Martin was guilty. I still don't think so. I agree with you. Why? For two reasons. I don't think he's a type that kills... And the stolen bonds haven't been found. Someday, them bonds will turn up. I wonder where and how. The following day brought Lem to the jail to visit Bob Martin. Bob's attitude had changed considerably. Lem, I've done a lot of thinking since yesterday. I've got to trust someone. I've got to trust him all the way. Yes? Will you do me a favor? Anything I can do. I want you to take a message to my ma. You mean about the cash you got hid? Yes. I'm going to tell you where it can be found. If you'll promise to go to my ma tonight and tell her. Right. And one thing more, Lem. Yeah? You've got to swear that you won't tell anyone, not anyone, that I've trusted you. 
Well, Judge, good morning. Good morning, sir. The judge has just come in. And close that door, will you, Judge? Now listen careful, then. Listen to what I've got to say. Thank you, sir. That brought listen to everything. Sir, everything's going, Sheriff. How's your prisoner? He's still with us. There's company in your cell right now. Everybody? Yep. Lim Foster. I'll put him out. Come on, Lim. On your way. Yeah, goodbye, Bob. Goodbye, Lim. Thanks for coming. Uh, go right into the cell, Judge. I'll have to close the door on you. Quite all right, sir. Quite all right. I came, Bob, because I'm sorry I couldn't grant the request you made in court yesterday. Oh, I, I see. Bob, all the judge can do in court is preside. It was my duty to see that evidence for both sides was presented in a legal manner and abide by the decision of the jury. Uh, all right. Let it pass. Young man, I... Uh, I had this second purpose in coming here to see you today. Yeah? You expressed a desire to see your mother. Well, I guess I told you why. Ma can't come here, and I don't like to trust anyone to take a message to her. Martin, would you trust me? Oh, my gosh, Judge, after what I said to you yesterday about that, I'm surprised that you'd bring it up. My offer still holds, Martin. I realize you were emotionally upset, but you undoubtedly said a lot of things you didn't mean. I... I've got to get word to Ma in some way. Uh, Judge, would you take it to her? I'd be very happy to. Well, here's the situation. Right in back of our house is a deep ravine. At the bottom of it, there's a creek. Yeah. About 50 yards upstream on the south side of the creek, there's an old tree that fell from the bank up above. It's laying on its side, and the trunk is hollow. There's a tin box in that hollow trunk, and that's where my money is. Will you tell that to my Ma? Indeed I will, my boy. Will you tell her tonight? Yes, Ma goes to bed just about the time it gets dark. So will you be sure and get to the house around 8 o'clock or before? Yes. I, I'll be mighty obliged to you, Judge. And if it isn't too much trouble, will you put in a word or two so that Ma won't feel too bad about what... what's going to happen at sunrise tomorrow? That evening, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up after a two-hour ride from town and dismounted near the home of Bob's mother. They saw Lim Foster rapping on the door. Yes? Evening, Miss Martin. My name's Foster, Lim Foster. You got a message from your son. Please come inside. I've been thinking about my boy. Well, I... I come because of something Bob wanted to let you know. Yes? Well, he had some money, uh, quite a sum, I guess. He's got it hid, intending to surprise you. Oh, please excuse me a minute. Howdy, Mrs. Martin. Sheriff Green. Mind if I step inside? Why, uh, no. Come in. I've got... Uh, I'm Foster. Hi. What are you doing here? I'm talking to Miss Martin. It's private talk. What do you want, Sheriff? I've got a message for you, Miss Martin. And it's a private one. It's from your son. You mean to say he trusted you with the message? After the way you rushed him to jail, to trial, and back to jail? He knows that I did nothing but my duty. Don't tell me he gave you a message for Miss Martin. He sure did, and what's more... Oh, my sake, someone else. Evening, Mrs. Martin. I see horses outside, so if you have company... I... Sheriff Green and Lamb. What in tarnation brings you here? Why, I... Don't tell me you got a message from Bob Martin. What? Did he tell you to keep it secret like he did me? Hey, what is this? Are you two here for the same thing I am? You're all here for the same thing. Well, yeah. There he is, ma'am. Now, look here, mister. When you call on me, you said... You're not when I called on Sheriff. I called on several others, and each got the same message. There were four men who offered to do a favor for Bob Martin... It seemed reasonable to suppose that one of the four was a man who framed him. Well, you know. Each of those men was told that the Lone Ranger would conduct a manhunt, even after tomorrow's hanging. Each of those men was made to understand that stolen bonds would identify Joe Fenner's killer. You spoke of the Lone Ranger. Well, that's him, ma'am, right there. <gasps> oh. Today, Bob Martin accepted the offer of each man. He told four of you where he'd hidden money. He asked each of you to come here. To his mother. Well, I came just before eight, like he asked me to. Number one, Alem. And the sheriff was next. Number two. I got here as soon as I could put another deputy on guard at the jail. Three. Number four waited for darkness to cover his movements. Well, who is he? Where is he? Toto's watching him. Come with me and we'll see what the judge is doing. The 
judge, making his way along the bank of a stream, recalled every detail of Bob Martin's instructions and seemed to hear Bob's voice saying, Back of the house, there's a deep ravine. At the bottom of it, there's a creek. About 50 yards upstream on the south side. Three. Here it is. On its side. The trunk is hollow. There's a tin box in the hollow trunk. <laughs> tin box? That's where my money is. Will you tell that to my ma? I'll tell his ma. Please don't change the contents of this tin box. Stop it. Uh, Pick up that box, Tonto. Me got him. You hey, get him up, Judge. You cover it. Sheriff, Lawson. We were all here, you scrump. Well, wait, wait. Huh? I'm here at Martin's request. Shall I? He asked me to get his money to take it to his mother. Shall I again? He told us all the same thing he told you. But you, Judge, didn't go to his mother. You came here. Let's find out why. Let go of him. still. Wait, I... Oh, what's this in your pocket? You got him? Here. Bonds. See if these belong to Joe Fenner. They did. These are the ones we've been looking for. I found them. The truth for a change. Judge, you killed Fenner, stole his bonds, and framed Bob Martin. You learned that Martin's death might not solve the crime. You knew you had to plant some of these bonds in that tin box to satisfy everyone that Martin was guilty. Isn't that the truth? Come clean. Isn't it? Yes, sir. I admit it. Whoopee! You hear that, boys? Bob Martin's not guilty. That's the news he's waiting in jail to hear. Montado will tell him. Hey, wait for us. You tell his mother. We gotta thank you. I'll be thanked when I see Bob's face when he hears the news. Steady, big fella. Montado! Get him up, scout! I'm still just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.